Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fearlessly Authentic. I'm your host, Jody Harrison Bauer, and I am so excited to have you here with me today. I have been wanting to do a show about working out, strength, fitness, everything that I have been doing for the last 35 years. And I just never got around to doing something like this that it's been a long time. And I just I, I I just think it's time. Spring is here, summer is around the corner, and it's just time to get this stuff done. So here we go. A lot of women, well, first of all, if you are a first-time listener, thank you so much for joining us today. This is the show where we educate you, empower you, entertain you a little bit and inspire you to live your most fearlessly authentic life. Because if we're not doing that, then what the heck are we doing? And it's not always easy. I get it. Um, but I'm really hoping that with these shows every single week that you are learning something and feeling empowered from it. And as I said, as I was mumbling over my words, because I was actually trying to find my glasses and I can't find them, um, is that you know, a lot of people, when they meet me and I tell them that I have this podcast, they ask me, oh, is it a fitness and nutrition um, podcast? I said, no, it is about being fearlessly authentic, stepping into your truth with courage. And for so many people walking into either meeting with a personal trainer or starting to go to a group fitness class or just taking that first step to take a walk or get on a treadmill or whatever it is to start moving your body is scary. But every time you do it, you get more and more comfortable with it and it becomes a regular type of habit. And they say it takes at least 21 days to create a habit, but it's actually doing that thing for 21 days that starts helping you create this new habit habit. But that is for another episode. Today, I want to talk about being fit, being strong, being feminine. For so many years, if you've been listening to this podcast for four years now, you know that I have been working out for most of my life for 43 years now. I'm 63. And I've been training men and women, mostly women, for the last 35 years. And when I started training women, it was more about group fitness. Yes, we would pick up the little weights and so on. Uh, but I was one of the very few women that after class would go and work out or before class would go and work out or on the days that I didn't teach or train clients, I would lift weights. And my friends looked at me like I was crazy and I stayed true to myself and that's one of the things that I'm probably proudest of is that I didn't allow anybody to stop me from doing something that I must have known deep down was really, really good for me. And that's strength training. So even when I was teaching an aerobics class, high, low aerobics for one hour, which is actually a high intensity interval training workout for one hour. And let me tell you, we didn't have microphones back then. So I was screaming over the music that you were torching calories, you were torching fat, and you were building or maintaining muscle, depending on how you were eating outside of working out, because food is 80% of this equation. And I remember early on in my fitness career, going to the gym, watching the same people going to the gym every single day and wondering why hasn't this girl's body changed? Why hasn't this guy's body changed? It was mostly this one man I'll never forget. And he had a very big belly and he worked out so hard. And I realized obviously with my, with my um, education that it was because he didn't change his diet. He wasn't changing the way he was eating. He was going to the gym because it felt great and that was amazing. But if he wanted to feel and look as good from taking all that time out of his life to go to the gym, he was missing a huge component and that is food. But lifting weights really didn't become a thing until 
maybe the last 10 years. And I talked to my youngest daughter about this a lot. She's 31 and I have, she's been lifting weights. I don't know. Uh, I would say since she was probably 15 years old and that was sort of foreign to a lot of her friends. That was just not something people did. So when she was wor- doing a workout to prepare for a game, they weren't lifting weights. It, it what, that part of it wasn't involved and there wasn't anybody, a coach saying to them outside of whatever workouts or drills they were doing to hit the gym also. And now you see all of these young kids in the gym working out. And I think it's wonderful. And women are embracing weight training. They're embracing resistance training. Resistance training really just means that you are resisting your own body weight. So when I train somebody, the first thing that I will have her do is go through a bunch of fundamental moves so I can see how she moves her body, how much awareness she has of her body and how much she could lift her body up and down. Like showing me how she does a push-up or how she does a squat or a lunge. Those are all indications to me as to where she is and where we can start. So for beginners, if you are a beginner and you are listening to this and you have never lifted a weight in your life, but you're curious about it and you know that you should because it will help actually slow down the aging process incredibly, your bones will thank you because we lose bone density as we get older and that's what causes osteoporosis and also having the right diet to maintain those muscles so they're strong and they don't become brittle That's why we see, or we used to see so many older people fall and I'm dating myself, but maybe many of you can relate to this, but the commercials, when I was growing up in my teens and twenties, it was always this commercial of this old lady who was probably my age, uh, saying I have fallen and I can't get up. Right. Um, and she was falling because she wasn't working out. She wasn't lifting weights. And uh, thank goodness she had that thing around her neck so somebody could come and help her pick up. But just think about if she was lifting weights, if she was, if she did have strong bones and not brittle ones that broke as soon as she fell and had a strong core, more than likely she wasn't going to fall. And even me, I have a 65 pound dog that's very strong and she pulls and she has pulled me down to the ground and lucky for me that I do have a strong core because I could have really gotten hurt every single time she's pulled me down to the ground. And it's only been like three times, but caught me off guard, wasn't wearing the right shoes and you can get hurt really fast. So working out, lifting weights as early as you can be, I would say a safe age to do it is after you've gone through puberty. So 15, 16 years old, and you get the okay from a healthcare provider or a coach or somebody who's in that business to tell you that it's time to lift weights. And ladies, if you were in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, it is not too late for you to start lifting. You just need to start slower, right? Because we're not going to run a marathon, before we train for a marathon. So we're not going to go and pick up 20 pound dumbbells to do bicep curls. If we've never done a bicep curl, we have no body awareness whatsoever, which is why I say almost every single week that if you need help starting a new program, whether it's mindfulness, breathing, yoga, strength training, um, nutrition, find a mentor or a coach who can guide you. I have many people that help me because there are a lot of things that I don't know, not about fitness and nutrition, but in other things that I'm doing where I need help. And I love to learn and then execute, even though I might be scared to do it. So as you're listening to me right now, you might be a little scared to start. And I want to be here to assure you that you don't need to be scared. Just make sure that you have somebody there who can guide you properly and could watch your form and 
And then you're just going to grow into this very strong woman because strength is the key to fitness. And I have been shouting this from the rooftops for over 35 years. And how do we get strong? Right? Women come to me, I want to lose weight. I want to get lean. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel hot. I want to be healthy. But the biggest thing they say to me all the time is that the number one thing is I want to feel strong in my body. And if you can resonate with that and you haven't lifted weights yet, this is your opportunity to do that. And the thing that I love about lifting weights is that it's really accessible. You can do it at home. You could do it at a gym. You can do it with a friend. There are so many YouTube videos to learn properly how to lift weights. You can do it anywhere you want to do it. And lifting those weights is easy if you have the, you know, when you're doing it properly, you can use resistance bands. And as I said at the beginning, you can also use your own body weight. You would be blown away to understand that if you're doing the move correctly, concentric, eccentric moves. So when you're doing a bicep curl, it's the concentric move. And then the eccentric is bringing your arm away from your body. If you are doing those properly and your joints are aligned, there is a very, 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 very low chance of injury. And that's why it's important that if this is new to you, that you do find somebody who can help you. Increasing your strength, even incrementally, has the most powerful domino effect, not just on your athletic ability, but in your daily life. So I'm specifically talking to women who aren't professional athletes, who are not high-performing athletes. For that, you need a specific coach. I'm talking to the everyday girl that wants to look hot in her clothes and out of her clothes for her first. And then if she wants to do that for and with someone else, that is her choice. But I want you ladies to understand that I want you to do this for yourself first. Strength will help you last longer, no matter what you're doing. You will develop stronger bones. As I mentioned, we will not have those brittle bones or we have we will have a lesser chance of having brittle bones when you lift weights. And you also have the opportunity of managing your weight better and you'll be able to sleep better. Trust me, after a really, really good workout, you will sleep like a baby. It's absolutely crazy. What you'll also find out is not only will you start feeling stronger physically, you're going to start feeling stronger mentally. Now, this isn't to leave out cardio at all. I don't like cardio personally. It is not my favorite thing to do, but I will do it and I have done it. And I've done the HIIT workouts. I've done everything. You name it, I've done it. But if you want to get fit and strong and you want to rock your own world, start lifting weights. Some people overdo it. I see people in the gym. They're reading a newspaper. For some of you, I think you all know what a newspaper is. Uh, reading a newspaper, reading their phones, and they're not really putting any intensity into that workout. So the other, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was the intensity of your workout. So many people will, you'll see so many people going to the gym and just sort of walking through their workout or walking through their cardio. You only need to do, again, this is for somebody who wants to torch some body fat, gain lean muscle mass, wants to feel lean and light, but strong in their body, lifting weights and doing about 20 to 30 or 40 minutes of cardio afterwards. If you do cardio before your workout, 
you will have exhausted those muscles and you'll be exhausted and you will not be able to lift till failure. And in life, you know we need to fail, right? We all have to fail a little bit in order to succeed. And it's the same way when you lift weights. You want to lift till failure. But I'm getting past myself right now. Part of lifting weights is to help you reach your fitness goals, right? You want muscles. Muscles are sexy. I've been saying this for about 20 years. And nowadays, it's so easy to just order the weights from Amazon, get them in your home, and like I said, throw on a YouTube video and start working out. I've got some incentives for you for working out. Not only will, this is a good one, not only will weight and strength training help you improve your motor skills, but it will also help with your cognitive skills. You'll be able to walk faster, remember things better, and maybe even breathe a little easier. I remember thinking about this when I wasn't lifting, but I was doing something else. I was um, competing in Latin dancing about two years ago, and I, um, I had to use my brain in a different way, and it was really challenging. So if you are new to lifting weights, it's going to challenge you cognitively and physically. And that's where the whole mind and body connect. You can't do one without the other. They must connect and you will get stronger physically and mentally. I'm going to take a really, really quick break right now. We'll be back in a second or two and we will get into more details about how you can start lifting weights and feel better, stronger, healthier, hotter, and just feel better about yourself. See you in a few minutes. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I found my glasses. Oh, I feel so much better. So let's talk about what strength training offers, the benefits, and why you should start right now. And please feel free to reach out to me on all social platforms. I You can find me at Jody Harrison Bauer. And I would love to answer all of your questions about strength training, lifting weights, and so on. It's especially important as we age. So the sooner you start, the better off you'll be. Otherwise, you're just going to play catch up. So as I mentioned, when we start lifting weights, we're going to increase our muscle mass. When we increase our muscle mass, we decrease the amount of fat we have in our body. So as we age, unfortunately, we naturally lose muscle mass and strength, which is why it's so important that you start when you are younger, because the muscle that you build now in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you'll always have it. It might look as though you're losing it, that muscle mass. And I've even noticed it in my body that you'll lose some muscle mass, but as soon as you start lifting heavy again, the muscle comes back. That's called muscle memory. It comes back if you are doing it consistently and if you are eating correctly. So when people ask me how they should eat, I tell them that it depends on what their activity level is and what their fitness goals are because everybody's goals are different. Some people might want to gain weight, gain muscle, lose fat. Everybody has a different reason for why they want to start strength training or lifting weights or getting into the gym. So as we get older, we're going to lose muscle mass and strength and the strength training will help hold on 
to that muscle mass. So at my age, at 63, am I building a lot of muscle? No. What I'm doing is maintaining. Can I build some muscle? Sure. So when I had surgery almost two years ago, I put it work out for six weeks. Did I lose some muscle? No. Like you can't lose muscle that fast. You can't lose all your muscle that fast. But it took a while to come back because I did lose strength. And so I came back slower. I didn't come back as strong as I was before the surgery. So there are a lot of things involved in it, but certainly getting older is a thing and you will lose muscle if you're not already lifting or you haven't lifted. You'll also have improved bone health. Remember, going back to that muscle mass that you're maintaining or building, depending on where you are in life right now, that's not to say also, if I didn't say this before, that I can't build muscle. I could probably still build a little bit of muscle, which I think is really, really cool, which is why you see a lot of women still in great shape over 60. So being over 60 and being postmenopause is no excuse. You know, when I was competing, I was lifting to look a certain way. I competed in bikini and I became a two-time world bikini champion at the age of 49 when everybody told me I was too old. And I had a lot of muscle on my body and I loved it. Muscles are sexy, you guys. It is, it's sexy on a man, it's sexy on a woman and it should feel like so prideful of you. You should have so much pride in the fact that you, you, just you, have built that muscle. Nobody gave it to you. You had to work for every bit of muscle you have on your body. And at 49, to walk on stage and win two consecutive world shows while I was actually postmenopausal was a huge feat for me. But that's something that I can own forever. And I tell my clients that. That muscle you're building right now at 35, 45, 55, 65, you've got that forever. You stop lifting weights, you're going to lose it. But then if you start lifting weights again, it will come right back. And you need that at every age for functional strength. When you bend down to lift up groceries or you bend down to pick up your child or grandchild or pick up your dog, that's functional strength reaching up to a cabinet, moving side to side, lateral movements. That's all functional strength as you do side lunges or you're doing any type of lateral move. My clients used to hate when I had them doing lateral moves, but I used to always remind them that if they're in the kitchen and their kid's screaming and they're moving side to side, they're going to be really, really happy that I had them doing those lateral moves to keep their legs their glutes, their core strong. And when you're lifting dumbbells, free weights versus on a machine, you are engaging your core more than you would on a machine. So for a while, a lot of those machines got really, really dusty in the gyms and nobody was using them. Everybody was using the free weights. Those would be called the dumbbells or the barbells or the kettlebells. Because when we use a dumbbell, any type of free weight, we need to engage our core in order to do that movement. Think about it. If you go back to a bicep curl, you have to engage your core when you do that concentric move, bringing your hand towards your shoulder to do that bicep curl. Versus if you're on a machine, you're not really engaging your core that much. And as we age, we need to make sure that we have a strong core so we don't fall and get injured. Improving bone health has to do with lifting weights, having, having strong bones. By lifting weights, you will maintain 
your bone density more than if you didn't lift weights. And those brittle bones are can cause osteoporosis. So strength training is effective in increasing bone density, which is particularly important for women who are at a higher risk of osteoporosis as they age. So by placing stress on the bones through resistance training, that helps to promote bone growth and reduce the risk of fractures. Okay, have I sold you yet on strength training and lifting weights? Okay, there's more. Strength training will also enhance your metabolism. It will enhance your metabolism. Building and maintaining muscle mass through lifting weights will increase your metabolic rate, making it easier to manage weight and prevent age-related weight gain. So many women I know feel that they're gaining weight as they age, and this is what's just supposed to happen. It's not just supposed to happen. The issue is, is that as we get older, we don't necessarily move as much or eat as healthy as maybe we used to. And we find ourselves gaining weight because our metabolism has slowed down because of age, because of being postmenopausal. So what we need to do is to do things that will enhance our metabolism, that will help fire it up, rev it up. And there are two ways that you can do that. Lift weights and eat healthy. Those are the two ways that you will rev up or enhance your metabolism because it is inevitable we are going to all age and our metabolism is going to slow down. But if you know me, you know that I don't believe in excuses and getting older to me is not an excuse to gain weight, to get out of shape, shape and and become unhealthy. You will have better joint health if you do strength training. By strengthening the muscles around the joints, that helps to improve joint stability and function, reducing the risk of osteoarthritis and alleviating joint pain commonly associated with aging. So luckily, I really haven't had much experience with this, thank goodness. And because of the way that I've trained myself and I've trained my clients, I've always emphasized the importance of joint alignment. That when you're standing there ready to do a, a squat or a deadlift, making sure that your hips are over your knees, which are over your ankles, and understanding the dynamics of what your body needs to be doing. That's why body awareness is very important. And I will admit that the clients that have come to me in the past 35 years that don't have a lot of body awareness, it's a little bit more challenging for them and for me to help them. But they get there because I'm patient and they're patient and we we help we help each other. But sometimes it could be a little bit challenging. So if that's you, don't get discouraged. Just find the right trainer for you. You can do this. Because as we strengthen, as we build muscle, we're actually protecting our joints. Think about that. It's like a cushion for our joints. You don't want to become that frail old person that's going to fall and then be bedridden. I don't want that for you. And as I mentioned before, strength training will also increase your functional ability. 
So moving to side to side, getting pushed, um, your dog pulling you. So those are things, you know, that I try to do with my clients to mimic their day-to-day activities. Most of the time we are walking forward. So I always have them practice running backwards, running sideways, stop, short, run, fast, quick spurts of energy. So they understand like if, God forbid, they get pushed in a crowd or they trip over something, they know how, they have that strength already in their core. That is just so incredibly important as we get old. Strength training exercises often mimic those activities of daily lifting. As I mentioned, like lifting groceries, carrying your kids around, climbing stairs, right? Step up on a bench, step down, step up, step down. See if you can do that 10 times on each side. Then maybe add two pound weights, then three pounds and four pounds and five pounds. But make sure that your joints don't hurt. By improving strength, endurance, and mobility, you lessen your chances of any falls and remaining to be an independent person because none of us want to depend on somebody else to take care of us. So if you're in your if you're in your 30s right now, you're probably thinking, "Oh my goodness, Jody, like that is the last thing that I could think about it." But if you have a mom or a dad that never worked out and you see them having a tough time getting up from a chair, sitting down, holding on to the wall, not being able to push their grandchild in the stroller, not being able to get out of the car without some help. Had they done some strength training, then they probably wouldn't have those those issues now. But again, it's not too late. My mom had a stroke at 80 and was completely paralyzed on her right side. And, you know, she was in a wheelchair and she was able to kick with one side, kick a ball with one side, throw a ball with her left side. And she learned how to stay strong. And it was, it was really a beautiful thing to watch. So there really are no excuses. I wish that my mom had lifted weights and had done more strength training. Um, it could have helped her in the long run and ate better. But we're just going to talk about strength training today. The other thing that I touched on about strength training is how it can improve and enhance our mental well being. I never knew how much strength training slash lifting weights was helping me become a stronger-minded woman. Not like in a stubborn way, but mentally stronger. Until I looked back on all the years that I lifted and thought and went through some tough times, and I thought, whoa, I couldn't have gotten through this if I wasn't doing the things that I did at the gym because regular strength training has been linked to improved mood, reduce symptoms of anxiety and depression, and as I mentioned before, enhance cognitive function. We are going to take another short break, and I'll be back in a few minutes with more about metabolism, fat, and strength training. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We are just finishing up all of the benefits of strength training We have reduced risk of chronic disease. Strength training has been shown to have positive effects of various chronic conditions commonly associated with aging, including cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and certain types of cancer. So as you can see from everything that I've read to you so far and shared with you from my notes, that strength training has so many positive benefits for us. And it also helps us 
increase our chances of living a longer life by maintaining muscle mass and strength training. It contributes to a longer, healthier lifespan by reducing the risk of age-related diseases and improving our overall quality of life. And I can tell when somebody is hitting the gym, lifting weights, or is just sort of getting by. And with a lot of the weight loss that has happened with Ozempic in the past year, with that weight loss, it's normal to lose some muscle mass. And that's why eating protein is so important. That's a big, 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 big part of building and maintaining muscle mass. So there are many ways that we could boost our metabolism, especially as we get older. The two most important things are eating and moving. Really, those are the two biggest factors in revving up our metabolism. Regular exercise, staying hydrated, eating enough protein, eating regularly, eating spicy foods, drinking green tea, getting enough sleep, reducing stress, and drinking coffee in moderation, moving more, and never, ever, ever do crash diets. So I'm going to get into all of these because I think it's very important uh, because I did touch upon how people um, blame their slower metabolism on aging. And as I said at the top of the hour, yes, our metabolism does slow down, especially for women, postmenopausal women. So we have perimenopause. We have all those symptoms of menopause not getting our periods regularly, hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, brain fog, etc. If you want to learn more about hormones and menopause, please listen to my interview with Dr. Elena from last week's show. It was incredibly educational and um, I have just gotten so much great feedback from her whenever she's on the show. So our metabolism slowing down is a reality, okay? So what do we do? We need to either work out more, work out smarter, and eat the right foods that is that are going to rev up our metabolism. Now, if you're not exercising at all and you're not eating enough protein, but you're like, well, I'll, I'll just include spicy foods. It's not really going to do it. It helps a little bit. But eating regularly, not skipping meals, you don't want your blood glucose levels to drop. And then you eat something sugary, high in sugar, and then it, it boosts your blood glucose levels up high. So you go, you drop, and then you go up high. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your blood glucose levels steady throughout the day by eating small meals throughout the day. And you want to eat enough protein based on your activity and your goals. So if you are a sedentary sedentary person, you're not going to need to take in as much lean protein as a very active person. The normal rule of thumb, if you are an active person and you want to gain muscle, lose fat, take in about one gram of protein per body weight. Because every time you eat, you rev up your metabolism. Every single time. Think of this. You put a pot of water on your stove, the water starts boiling. Eventually, the water is going to evaporate because you didn't replenish that pot of water with more water. The goal is to keep that pot of water boiling all day long. 
That's your blood glucose levels. That's your metabolism staying fired up. And by eating more regularly during the day, an example I've used forever is you're going to take a trip, you get in the car, and you are at a quarter of tank or less. You don't say, let's go take this trip and maybe we'll find a gas station or a plug-in if your car is electric. You don't do that, right? You plan ahead. So it's the same thing. You don't should never leave your house without any food and you should know when you're going to eat. Now that might sound extreme to a lot of you, but I want you to understand I'm making this point so you understand the importance of food and your metabolism. So if you think, if you are my age, you're in your 60s and you think you are are as active as you were in your 30s and 40s and you're eating as healthy as you were in your 30s or 40s, you're probably not. And what's probably missing in your in your whole, the whole pie is the lean protein. When I met my husband, he's tall and thin. When I met him, I think he weighed, he's six feet tall. I think he weighed 149 pounds. I'm like, well, dude, you're a little too skinny for me. But he had muscle on his body and I started feeding him more and more protein and he ended up putting almost 20 pounds of muscle on his body. And it's incredible. And women could do that too. It might be a little bit easier for men, but don't give up ladies. It's no excuse. So the first thing you need to do is to get moving. That's going to start revving up your metabolism. The next thing is exercise exercise doesn't have to be done every single day at a high intensity. Be smart about about the way you exercise. Again, if you're not sure how to do any of this, please feel free to message me or find somebody in your area who can take you through a workout and decide with you what type of program is right for you based on your age, your goals, and your activity level. Sometimes we just have to quiet the noise in our ha- in our head, our house in our head, right? Because stress slows down our metabolism. It raises our cortisol levels, which is a hormone, but it slows down our metabolism. We don't want anything to slow our metabolism anymore. We want to keep it steady and we want to fire it up as much as possible. A lot of people have talked about coffee. I love coffee. I usually have like a cup and a half a day. That's about it. But I usually go to the gym with a coffee all the time. And um, in an article that I just read, it said, um, quote, downing a caffeinated beverage an hour before your workout will help burn 15% more calories afterward, according to a study in the International Journal of Sports nutrition, and exercise metabolism. So that's kind of an old school thing. But listen, you guys, this is where I'm at. I'm talking about all old school stuff. It always comes back to old school. What's old school? What was Arnold doing in the 70s? He was going to the gym. He was lifting weights. He was eating every two hours. What was he eating? Chicken, meat, um, fish. He was eating leafy greens. I'm going to do a show about what to eat but there's just too much information. But it's the old school stuff that works. Sure, it's nice to add in something fancy and different, um, but at the end of the day, just move move your damn body. Like take a walk. I tell everybody to just start somewhere. If you're not sure where to start, you don't have anybody to talk to about where to start, put your sneakers on, get a good pair of supportive sneakers and go outside and walk. It will be great for your head and it'll be great for your body. Just start there. It's okay. And you will rev up your metabolism. You will fire it up. Make sure that you eat within an hour after working out because you're still burning calories. You're still torching fat. The other thing that has been shown to rev up your metabolism a little bit is to get up and get outside and be exposed to bright light 
from morning to noon. That's something that I started doing a while ago. Again, these are all things that are going to help keep your metabolism fired up. But please, if you take away anything today, you must do resistance training, aka lift weights, and you need to lift weights and eat enough protein. The food and the exercise are very, very connected. You can't just go to the gym every day and work out and eat like crap. And you can't eat like a little field mouse and go to the gym and lift because you won't have enough energy to lift heavy to maintain or build that muscle. If you don't get the appropriate amount of protein, the excess calories from foods you eat are more likely to be stored as fat, according to a study in the Journal of Obesity and Metabolic Syndrome. Protein takes more energy for the body to digest than carbohydrates do. Protein, everybody, you need lean protein to build muscle and maintain muscle, and you need to lift weight to build muscle and maintain muscle. It will affect your overall wellness in ways that you never, ever realized, and you will actually start slowing down the aging process. At 63, I feel better than I've ever felt in my life, and I want you to feel the same way. For me, it's that I want to feel hot and healthy for the rest of my life. Even when I become a grandma one day, which isn't in the future. I didn't mean to just throw that out there. Uh, but to me, that's really important. And that's me also being authentic about what I want. So think about what it is that you want. Think about what it is, how you want to feel in your body. I think most of you want to feel strong. I think most of you want to feel powerful, that you can pick up things, put them down, get up and down from a chair, walk up and down the stairs. I know the younger ones listening right now might think that's ridiculous, but start easy and work your way up. I know you can do this and it will make a huge change in your life. Thank you so much for listening today. Again, you can find me on all social platforms at Jody Harrison Bauer. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Fearlessly Authentic. And please DM me with any questions that you have about strength training or metabolism. I would love to help you. Until next week, everybody, go live your most fearlessly authentic week. Bye-bye.